Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, so that we may prepare ourselves to worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
O God, who are pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity, and so in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal reward through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. God sets a father in honor over his children. A mother's authority he confirms over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. He stores up riches who reveres his mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children, and when he prays, is heard. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fail, be considerate of him. Revile him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten, firmly planted against the debt of your sin, a house raised in justice to you. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on as Christ, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if one has a grievance against another. As the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all these, put on love, that is, the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, and speak into which you were also called into one body, the peace, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your heart to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, be subordinate to your husbands as is proper in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and avoid any bitterness toward them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children so they may not become discouraged. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate of the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, 
And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There is also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus So we've had this time of isolation over the past nine or 10 months because of the coronavirus. And so like most families, my family and I have been together a lot more than usual these days. And I can honestly say that it's been really good. We haven't been able to do a lot of the things that we normally like to do, but it's been a chance to reflect on what's really important in life, like family. And I've always liked how the church in its wisdom has chosen to celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family on the Sunday right after Christmas. It's a really good time to reflect on all of the events surrounding the birth of Jesus, how strange they were in a miraculous way, and how they challenged each member of the Holy Family. First off, how Mary and Joseph became aware that they were going to be the mother and the foster father of the child Jesus. Mary, barely a teenager, heard it from an angel, and Joseph found out about it in a dream. Then they had to make the difficult journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem while Mary was about to give birth to Jesus. Then the crazy events of the angels appearing to shepherds and the wise men who journeyed from the east coming to give the baby Jesus some precious gifts. And how the infant was received in the temple as we hear about today in the gospel by two old prophets who were basically waiting to meet the Messiah so that they could go off and die. These two prophets, Simeon and Anna, told Mary and Joseph that their son would be a light to the nations. They told Mary and Joseph that he would be the cause of the rise and fall of many people. They said that because of Jesus, a sword would pierce Mary's heart. They said that this baby of theirs would be the answer to the prayers of the people of Israel who were looking for the promise of the Messiah. And then we know that, Jesus, or that Mary and Joseph had to flee to Egypt to avoid Jesus getting killed by Herod. And then imagine their shock to find out later that perhaps dozens of baby boys had been killed by Herod in his effort to eliminate the threat that Jesus had become to him. And then consider all of the things that must have happened in the early life of Jesus that aren't even recorded in the Gospels. What did th people think about Mary getting pregnant before she was married? What kind of scandals did the Holy Family have to live with? And how much of all of this did Jesus know himself? 
So in what ways did Mary and Joseph have to shelter and protect Jesus more than other parents would under normal circumstances? So how much through all of this did Mary and Joseph and even Jesus have to learn to accept and to trust in God's plan for them? All of the things that Mary and Joseph had heard about Jesus and what had been told them, how could they possibly have understood what it all meant? How could Mary and Joseph have taken this on without a deep trust in God? And how much did Mary and Joseph themselves need to grow in virtue for their own sake to deal with all of this and to be able to pass these things on to Jesus? It's difficult to know how much they needed to teach Jesus since we don't quite understand what it means when we say that Jesus was fully human and fully divine, and the Gospels aren't really much help on this either. But Luke's Gospel, it's interesting, at the close of the story of Jesus in chapter 2, when he was young, it says that he advanced in wisdom and age and favor before God and man. So being fully human, Jesus did have to advance in his life. So yes, I believe that even Jesus needed a holy family to grow and advance and become who God destined him to be. So as we celebrate and reflect on the Feast of the Holy Family then, I love how our lectionaries put the scripture readings together for this Sunday. In the second reading, we hear about the virtues from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. We hear about things like compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, forgiveness, peace, gratitude. St. Paul tells us to put them on, to put on these vir virtues like we're wearing them, like our clothes. Put them on so they'll cover us and stay with us all day. I can imagine Mary and Joseph putting on these virtues for the sake of Jesus and not just for his sake, but for their own sake as well. I can imagine these virtues helping them to build and affirm their trust in God. So like I said earlier, I've had time to reflect recently on my family, and I've reflected on the virtues that we're all called to cultivate and nurture in our families, no matter what form our particular families may take. As some of you know, we lost our daughter Amy in a car accident 27 years ago. And following her death, I began to keep a journal. And this journal took the form of letters that I would write to Amy. I wrote telling her of my feelings, of my faith journey, and of my struggles to reconcile the great love that deep down I knew God had for me, for Amy, and for all of us to reconcile that with the tremendous sorrow and grief we were experiencing at the time. And it was a great comfort for me to do this. As I wrote to Amy, I'd often reflect on how wise she must be now, now that she's able to see things as God sees them. And by writing about these things in my journal, possibly the greatest benefit for me was to learn to trust in God. Perhaps I got a small taste of how Mary and Joseph learned to trust in God, but I can tell you for sure that my trust in God definitely still needs a lot of work. And as the years have passed, I wrote in this journal less and less to where I, now I only do it a few times each year. But I did it once again this past week. It just seemed like a good time to do so after reflecting on the Holy Family and spending more time in prayer with my own family during Advent. And as I wrote in the journal this week, I read and reread and reflected on this second reading from St. Paul. I reflected on the virtues that he writes about. And I reflected on the great relationship that I had with Amy and the great times we had together. A day didn't go by where we didn't tell each other that we loved each other. And it's certainly gratifying now to know that. She and I were alike in a lot of ways although she was definitely a better person than I am. But then I also reflected on my shortcomings as a father, especially in light of the virtues that St. Paul shares with us today. And in particular, I reflected on my lack of the virtue of patience. And so in the letter I wrote this week, I asked Amy for forgiveness for all of the times that I was impatient with her. 
And although I'm confident she'd already forgiven me, I still had to ask it for my sake. Then as I reflected more on this reading today, I hit on the virtue of gentleness, gentleness and how much it's needed these days. There are a lot of people hurting right now because of what the pandemic's done to them or done to a loved one. And I may not have a clue about what's going on in other people's lives. So I realized it's especially important for me to be gentle with others right now so that, I, so that I can help them see God's love and concern for them. And then, of course, as St. Paul writes, how important it is to put on love, which is that bond of perfection. So I invite you to take another look at our second reading today and to reflect on the virtues that St. Paul lays out for us. Put one of them on, as St. Paul says, or a couple of them on, and wear them for a day or two. These are the kinds of virtues that Mary and Joseph talked about and lived for the sake of their son Jesus. And these are the virtues that will make your family, whatever form it is, to become a holy family. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us bring our prayers to the Lord. For the church, that God will form us into a family of faith that encourages and supports one another in living the gospel more fully each day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deepening of our prayer, that the Spirit will guide our families in praying together and help us to listen to God's response in the quiet of our hearts and in our experiences of each day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, that God will heal the sick, comfort the grieving, and strengthen health care workers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families who are suffering, that God will heal families who are estranged from one another, reunite families that have been separated at the border, help those in refugee camps to support one another, and keep parents in prison in communication with their children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all children, that Emmanuel will protect them from harm and help them discover their identity as children of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in Jerusalem, that the holy city for Jews, Muslims, and Christians may be a place of dialogue, respect, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for those who have died and for all who mourn them, we pray to the Lord. Lord In silent prayer, let us now mention our own special intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty God, we ask you to hear these prayers and those that we hold in our hearts. 
Continue to show us your mercy and your love. And we ask this all through Christ our Lord. Christ, the 
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and in your peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all those who, holding on to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, and celebrating the most sacred day on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hand, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take 
this, all of you and each of them. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hand. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven, of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercy, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. In Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
just a couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, the Holy Day uh, Mass, the Solemnity of Mary, Mother of God, that will be uh, on New Year's Day, obviously. Uh, there will be a vigil mass at 5 o'clock on Thursday evening, and then again at 10 o'clock on Friday morning, New Year's Day. Uh, our parish offices will be closed this Thursday and Friday uh, for the New Year's holiday. And like I said, at Christmas, we're, we're very glad to have our seminarians home with us uh, for Christmas, but you know, all, seminary is all a part of discernment, trying to figure out exactly where God uh, is calling you to go. And that's why young men go, is to figure, figure that out. And so uh, Harry Brown, one of our seminarians, uh, has just decided to take some time off. So uh, Harry, know that we, we still love you and care for you, and we will still keep you in our prayers. So God bless you uh, on your journey. God bless you. Please stand. For the end of this pandemic and all the damage that it has caused. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Blessed Stanley Rother. Let us pray. Bring those who refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.